Nasty yucky bird poo. Yuck. What's in there? Ooh. Daddy's getting the bucket. He's about to stoop. Dusty. Dusty is just the plane's name. It's him. Rubby, rubby, rub, rub, rubby, rubby, rub, rub. This plane. Um, in the short time I've been doing YouTube videos about this plane, I've had a lot of questions about the canards. Um, and the answer to that question is a bit more involved than just the canards. So I wanted to do a short video to explain, from my point of view, there's lots of other stuff on the internet. In fact, I'll link to some of the other videos about this particular model of plane. Uh, but from my point of view, what makes this plane amazing? Um, I also, just literally before recording this, the guy chap drove up and his car got out and started asking questions for 20 minutes about the plane. Um, so I'm recording this video in the hope that it will answer everyone's questions about the plane as far as I can tell. This was a 1976 Cessna 182P model, okay? And it was a straightforward stock Cessna 182P model for the first 29 years of its life until 2005. And in 2005, the then owner of this plane took it to Todd Peterson, who runs an organization with a website that's catmy-kenai.com, linked to in the comments. Uh, and Todd Peterson converts exclusively 182 P's and Q's, only those two models. And Todd, if you're watching this and I get anything wrong, forgive me, let me know the notes when I got wrong. Into these a stole conversion. And, and there are many, many stole planes, but there aren't many stole planes that can still carry four adults, full fuel luggage and fly best part of a thousand miles if you really wanted to stretch the range and, and fly economically. Um, but I mean, realistically, five, six hundred miles in one go. I mean, that's not as far, that's further than I've been in this plane in one go, but, but um, you know, it's got with long range tanks, just under 80 gallons of fuel and at a cruise of 12 gallons an hour, You've got, you've got six hours, six and a half hours total, including reserves, um, which is longer than most people need. One of the main reasons this plane has to be on the NREG is because there is not a European type certificate for this conversion that only exists in America. So all of the Peterson 182s um, are on the NREG as far as I know. Um, in Europe, this is the only one I've come across in the UK. I believe there's a much older one a very basic conversion, similar, a yellow one, I don't know where it is. Um, I know that there are one or two in Switzerland as well, but as far as I know, that's it in Europe. There's like a handful of them tops. Um, so let's talk about what's actually different. What did Todd Peterson do to this plane? Here he is, here's his name. So there are three main things that got done to this plane. In fact, well, four to this particular plane. Um, I have the receipt for the work that was done to this plane, and it was the total cost of the conversion was 295,000 US dollars in 2005. Now for that, that might sound like a lot of money, but for that, this plane had the stall conversion of the canards, and I'll go into those in a bit more detail in a minute. It had an upgraded brand new IO470F, 260 horsepower fuel injected engine put in. It had a brand new panel at the time, um, installed and it had a complete this this paint job was done in 2005 so that was 16 years ago um, all right so um, I, it may or may not have had a new prop at that point I can't remember off the top of my head I should know but I don't so canards engine paint job and panel otherwise the interior is still the original 1976 interior in a burnt orange which I love but is not to many people's taste but that's because I'm a child of the 70s and so it makes me feel right at home um, so what does this do, this slightly upgraded engine and the canards? Never mind the panel and the paint. What does the upgraded engine and these canards do? Well, these canards have a control surface which moves with the elevator. And when you pull the elevator back and the elevator the tail goes up, this goes down and vice versa. And roughly speaking, it gives you three times the elevator control compared to a stock 182. It's three times as sensitive, and that takes a little bit of getting used to, getting used to the first time you fly the plane. And one of the first times I, I test flew this plane, and I was 
I was used to the other 180s I've flown before. I was too uh, harsh with the elevator control and woo, it took me a while to realize that it's very, very sensitive. So it gives you much, much more elevator authority. But really its key thing is, I think, the 32 knot stall speed. I, I have flown this plane with an instructor straight and level at 35 knots, which is extraordinary. Slow flight is not yet something I've mastered in this plane. Um, I, I can happily come in on an approach at 50 knots, but it will, it will slow, fly even slower than that. But I mean, typically I come in at 60 knots over the fence uh, and rounding out and then uh, flaring to a full stall to touch down, hopefully the mains first. Um, Cessna 182s are famous for being very nose heavy and this was no exception, but the elevator, sorry, the nose canard totally changes the weight characteristics of the plane when it's flying. Um, with full power and brakes on and full stick back, within a couple of seconds, the nose wheel is off the ground just from the prop wash over, over these nose canards with the uh, elevator surface there. Um, what does it actually mean in real world terms? You can land much shorter. I, I can land this plane and stop in under 200 meters rollout. And that's on grass, that's on sort of slightly wet grass. Uh, it's actually here at Dunkers while I did that on the grass runway 17. Um, and that's with me not coming in as slowly as I could. And when I've, when I've really mastered it, I could get that down to under 150 meters if I come in actually slower uh, with some power on. Um, it means that it's much, much safer in the event of an off airport landing or an unscheduled landing. Uh, your stall speed, 32 knots, you're, you're coming into whatever you're landing into, whether it be trees or, or anything else, much, much slower ground speed. And if you've got a bit of a you know, five, 10 knot headwind, your ground speed is going to be 25, 30 knots um, if you've really slowed it down as much as possible. So in, an, in the scenario of an engine failure, uh, that hugely increases your options of, of where you can land the plane. You can land it in a much smaller space than a lot of general aviation aircraft. Um, it doesn't make any difference to the cruise speed as far as I know. Um, I get typically get 135 knot indicated cruise speed on this plane. Um, but the ability to take off and land really short is fantastic. I mean, I, I, fly, I have flown this into some what are for me quite challenging strips and I'm not by any means an experienced dull pilot. Um, although I do plan to get better. That's what these canards do. So they are connected with push rods to the elevator control and they react the opposite sense to the elevator at the back. Um, I love having fuel injection, carb heat being one less thing to worry about, um, and that bit of extra power. So this thing, it's incredible. It rotates at 40 knots, um, and as soon as you get the nose flat, you, you can start doing turns. I mean, again, I haven't tried that myself, but if you look at some of the videos that I'll link to in the notes below, um, you can see Todd himself flying one of his planes, getting it off the ground in an unbelievably short distance, and then immediately pulling a steep turn when he's doing barely 40, 45 knots. I hope that answers your questions about the plane. Um, thank you for watching um, and please subscribe if you want to see more. Only remains for me to say one more thing. Todd, thank you very much for a dream machine that, that I love and that I feel so safe taking my children in uh, and flying my family all around the UK and soon hopefully Europe. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Bye-bye. GoPro, stop recording. Can I help you?